Okay, so I'm the last one before the hackathon and beer and pizza. So I'm going to talk about uh, wrapping any REST API into a simple custom transformer. So uh, many of you probably know me already. Uh, I'm from Norway. Uh, the image is taken on grouse grind. It's a bit, all the sign says do not enter and then there's an open door and you can run up anyway. So it's kind of freeing the data. The data is there, you just have to get to them. <laughs> so FME supports 400 uh, formats and 500 transformers. So when you have used them all, what then? Then you of course, uh, as we have uh, seen uh, multiple times today, you connect to new services or processes. And uh, you can also use FME to automate non-supported methods. And you usually wrap this into uh, custom transformers, like the green one at the bottom, that are either linked. That means they, when you update them, they all the workspaces that use them also gets updated. If they are embedded in the workspace, you have to update them manually. So how do you get access to all these new formats and methods? You create first a workspace, and then when you're done and it's working, then you wrap it up in a custom transformer. And then you distribute it, either to only yourself, to your company, or to everyone here today. So you can uh, not only add formats, you can also add services. So if there are areas that FME isn't quite good, uh, then you can add those services inside FME. So I'm going to speak about four services. So the first one is a service called PDF tables. Have anyone he heard about that? No? That's good. Uh, so this one converts PDF tables, like in this example, to XML, CSV, Excel, or JSON. So usually what you do is you copy paste. Uh, when you have 600 pages on the PDF, then you can't do that. So these are the, all the taxes for properties in Oslo. So I wanted to check if there was some strange stuff in the data. So I used uh, that uh, PDF on a service called PDF tables. And I could create a map like this. So here are all the taxes for all the properties in Oslo. And when you have something on a map, you can easily see uh, the strange stuff. So for instance, in this island, there is one point which is red, and that means it's a very high tax. And if you look closer on that exact property, we see that he have to pay 500 million Norwegian kroner, which is like 500,000 euros in taxes, that small property. And that's just because they haven't split into all the different properties. And the municipality have already sent the invoice to the client, so he gets a check in the, his email. So that's uh, quite easy to spot these errors when you have it on a map instead of a large PDF. Second service uh, is a geocoder. So on the top left, you see there is a place called Rava. Anyone knows what that means? Uh, it's not possible to find it on Google Maps because it's a local name. But if you have your own service with more updated either address data or place names, then you can use that service and find the place. The third one is JS Reports. 
the support for generating PDF in uh, FME is not uh, optimal always for creating a good design on the PDFs. So this service uh, generates a PDF or some other format based on a JSON with the data, HTML file, and a CSS to style it. And we can use this in, uh, in FME instead of the PDF styler and PDF page formatter. The fir uh, fourth one is uh, the backblaze. Have anyone heard about that? Yeah. So it's basically a cheaper storage solution. So what do you need if you're going to integrate a service? First, you need the documentation. And if they are nice, they have a, a great <coughs> documentation, like you always have in your own workspaces also. And in this case, it's quite simple. It's just an URL with some parameters. And uh, authentication here is an API key that they use to allow, uh, allow you to use the service. So I'm going to have a look at that workspace. So it's pretty simple. It's three transformers and two inspectors. I use the creator to start everything. I use an attribute creator uh, before the HTTP caller to save the data. I have an underscore in front of the attribute just so I can get rid of it later. And then you just do the HTTP call to that particular service. So the good thing now is that you can just wrap all of this up into a custom transformer and then reuse it in multiple workspaces. So the second service is the geocoding service. So there is already a geocoder within uh, within FME, and it has some services to connect to, but none of them have very good local uh, data for Norway in this case. Uh, we update them every every. Uh, every five minutes, I think, all the municipalities in Norway. Oops. That might be interesting. Uh, so that's more fresh data. Instead, if you use Google, then you have like six months old data for your services. So what happens here? Uh, is there are three important things there. It's a bit uh, larger than the previous one. So the first thing you have to do is think about failures because it will fail when you're working with services. So right next to the polar bear, you see there's a port under it and there goes all the failed features. So this will be an output port of the custom transformer. And if you look near the brown cheese, then there's some logging. You always need to log the URLs because then it's easier to find the errors when you're running it on server afterwards. And uh, the nice little uh, woman over there, she cleans up all the attributes by using an attribute remover because you don't want any HTTP headers, uh, calculated parameters, etc., to go through uh, the rest of the system. You usually just want so a couple of new attributes. So the JS report online is generating a PDF by using an API key in this case. And at the top here we see the JSON with the data. At the center we see the styling, that like how the table should look like. Should it be blue or red or everything. And then at the 
Bottom here we see the pattern, how to input the data into that service. And at the bottom left we see that uh, a part of the PDF that gets generated. So you don't, uh, it's not scary um, because there's a lot of information regarding CSS and HTML online and you don't have to learn a lot of coding. This is an example that's already uh, in there when you register for the service. So this is also quite few transformers, three. So there's no uh, API token for this service, but uh, there's a username and password. And this is how the service looks like uh, when you go online. So you have uh, some data in a JSON. That's basically what you have to prepare within FME and ship to uh, the service. And then you have the template on where you should put all your variables. So these are quite few transformers also. So the thing to populate here is the, the body of the, you know, the data parameter. And as long as you uh, generate this with a JSON template or similar, then you can ship that data to the service. So the last one uh, is the Backblaze B2 cloud storage. So the only reason to use this is if you uh, price-wise want to store your data. If you have a lot of data, then it's quite much cheaper than anything else. Or you can store it everywhere because it's so cheap. So it's the same thing. There's an API key. Uh, you create the workspace and you can upload it on GitHub. It's already up on the uh, FME hub. And when it's up on the FME hub, then you can just start typing it uh, within the workbench. And then you have, uh, have it in, in your uh, location. So it's a good way to, to move the and to share the, your transformers. So this is uh, a bit uh, longer because there's, it's a bit more secure. So the top, um, uh, top uh, bookmark is the authentication to verify that you have a user. And then you get the token that you can use during the next step. So the green one is the get URL. That's the URL to the data you're uploading to the service. And the last step is actually uploading to that URL, the data itself. So it's a bit more complex, but yeah, not too bad. So when you're going to share it, because you don't want it to only have, a, have it on your own computer, like all the LiDAR disks you have been laying around also. So you want to share it with your own organization and then you, of course you use the uh, network disk or some common drive. You upload it there and then everyone have access to it. We use it a lot uh, at our company to uh, share important stuff. So that's one way if you don't want to uh, give it to everyone you want to give it to everyone, then you upload it to the hub. And then as I showed you, it will automatically arrive in the workbench to every FME desktop user. So there are five steps. You need to get some kind of uh, token, password, or access to the service. You need to find the documentation for your service. 
uh, you will need to handle fail calls because you will have a lot of uh, character and coding issues. The service will break, etc. You have to clean up your attributes so you don't have a lot of attributes going out because they will take up a lot of space. And, uh, and you should wrap everything up in a custom transformer so you can use it, reuse it easily. So, according to this web page, there's only 17,000 APIs left. So, please help. So, any questions while we watch this beautiful video <laughs> from yesterday? So the question was how you can set up this to be shared uh, among everyone else. Uh, so what we do internally is that location down at the bottom here, we just do it when we install. So this will be fixed uh, for all our users. So you don't have any way to pub, pub, public, uh, publicly change it or something, according to what I know, but might be possible. There is a registry. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? I think it's per sheet or something. Um, so it's 15 bucks for 500 pages. You can try it for free, you get some pages. all of the SOAP services. <laughs> we don't have any more questions, but yeah. thank you very much for yeah. presenting, that's great.